Ito po na naman ang inyong kapatid, Sister Tedchi Rodriguez. Ito po yung part 2 o ikalawang bahagi ng When to Keep Your Mouth Shut. Tulad po ng aking pong mga uh, tinuro last week, pinaplash po sa ating screen. Ayan po, ang lahat na mga mula isa hanggang pito na mga dapat na malaman natin na si tuwing bubukas natin ang bibig, wag na wag natin bubukas ang ating bibig kapag yan pong mga yan ang sinasabi po sa atin. So pagpatuloy po natin yung part 2, ang pangwalo naman po. If you would be ashamed of your words later, ako yung pang misan nasabi natin, ako, tapos alam naman natin, kasi ang Holy Spirit po nagko-convict talaga yan, eh, kinokonvict ka niya na ano na naman ang sinabi mo, uh, mali yung sinabi mo o nagsinungaling ka na naman. Sometimes, um, naiisip mo na bakit ko ba sinabi yun, napapahamak tuloy ako. Proverbs 8 verse 8, all the words of my mouth are sincere, none of them uh, are crooked. Okay? So, uh, pagmasdan po natin, ano ba yung mga sinasabi natin, baka mamaya mapahamak tayo, because there are always two powers from our tongue, death and life. And whoever indulges in any of the two, either death or life, shall eat its fruits. Yan po ay napakahalaga, no ho? Malaman natin. Ang pangsyam, if your words would convey a wrong impression, Proverbs 17, 27, those who spare their words are truly knowledgeable, and those who are discreet are intelligent. Alam nyo, misan po, um, meron kayong sinabi, no? Pero talagang, na, na it's a wrong impression, pero uh, sinabi na ninyo, nagko-convey ito ng wrong impression sa tao, sa kapwa natin, nasisira po yung kapwa natin dahil doon sa sinasabi natin. Naku, huwag nyo na po buksan ang ating bibig kung yung pong pagkakataon na yon ay magkakaroon po ng bad impression ang mga tao sa ating mga iba pang kasamahan o misan din, yung mga sinasabi mo, mali naman talaga, bad impression din yon laban sa iyo. Ang pangsampu, if the issue is none of your business, ayan, misan napakapakialamera naman natin eh. No? Hindi naman natin, hindi po naman natin business yun, hindi naman po dapat tayo concerned doon. Eh kung, may, kung nagkakagulo sila, dapat po eh maging peacemaker tayo. Dapat po tayo mismo ang mag-extinguish mag, um, mag nung pong anger na yon o nung chismis na yon. So, Jude 1, 9 to 10, ayan po. Yet the archangel Michael, when he argued with the devil in a dispute over the body of Moses, did not venture to pronounce a reviling judgment upon him, but said, may the Lord rebuke you. But these people revile what they do not understand and are destroyed by what they know by nature like irrational animals. So, kung hindi naman ninyo alam, please, wag ninyong pakialaman, okay? Uh, making you a false witness. No? Misa gusto natin duma na, na, nanging, uh, kuma, mahanap ng ating karamay, eh, no? nasasama pa yung iba. So, Yung mga pakialamera dyan, ho, mas, mag mas maganda, tumahimik na lang tayo. Number 11, when you are tempted to tell an outright lie. Ayan. So, kapag iyang bibig po natin, ay gustong-gusto na talaga magsinungaling, itiklop na po natin at isipar natin sapagkat lie is a lie. Wala pong tinatawag na white lies. Everything that is not true ay talaga pong ito'y kasinungalingan. Ano po nakalagay doon? Sa Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, these six things that the Lord hates, as, and, and seven are abomination to Him. Ano po yan? Yung pong dalawa po dito ay tungkol po sa mga bibig. Ano po yan? Uh, ito po yung slander at yung lying. Ayan, tandaan nyo ho, sa Proverbs. Ano pa po? Ang 12. If your words will damage someone's reputation, Proverbs 16, 27, ayan po, no? Minsan tayo po ang nag, uh, nagpapasiklab ng galit ng, may, ng mga tao eh. Mahilig po tayo sa intriga para madamage yung reputation ng mga tao. Kung ano-ano sinasabi natin, 
Minsan po, naiingit tayo. Minsan naman, nagagalit tayo. So, kung ano sasabihin mo, kunyari, eh, uh, minsan nga po, di ba, sasabihin pa natin, i-pray nga natin yan, kasi ganito yan, eh, no? Pero alam ng Panginoon, ang intensyon natin sa puso natin, tata- tatandaan po natin, sa Matthew 12, wala po talagang hindi mahuhusgahan ng Diyos sa lahat ng sinasabi natin paratang sa ibang tao. So, wag po tayong manghusga, lalo-lalo na kung hindi naman tayo sure, eh, tigil-tigilan natin ang pagbubukas ng ating mga bibig. Number 13, if your words would, would destroy friendship. Ayan. Alam nyo, marami po magkakaibigan na nagkasira-sira dahil din po sa, ayan, sa bibig. Proverbs 16:28, perverse speech sows discord and ta- tail-bearing separates bosom friends. Okay? So, marami po magkakaibigan, yung mga secrets nila, nakuha yun din is close sa iba. No? So, 14, when you are feeling critical, ayan po, yung bang gustong-gusto mo na talaga mamintas, gusto mo, gustong-gusto mo na naman mag-criticize. So, maliwanag po yan, the tongue is hard to tame. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. Sa James 3, with it we bless the Lord, and then with it we curse human beings or made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. This need not be so, my brothers. Sana po ay naibigan po natin at marami tayong natutuhan sa part 2 ng When to Keep Your Mouth Shut. Sa susunod po ay ang ikatlong bahagi sa pagtatapos ng ating 3 series teaching dito po sa ating pong When to Keep Your Mouth Shut. Ito po ang inyong kapatid, Sister Tetchi Rodriguez. Life-changing encounters, testimonies on healing, conversion, and new life. I'm Sister Malu Rivera from the Disciple of Thomas and uh, Intercessory Ministry. Um, it was a very depressing year for me, year 2000, of, uh, March 2000, when I was diagnosed with a stage 2 breast cancer. So with the help of modern medicines, um, I was able to survive the sickness. I have undergone six cycles of chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and I thought uh, everything was already okay. But then after a year, another uh, tra- tragedy struck my family. Uh, I was separated from my husband because of some personal reasons. Um, it was really very depressing because I have two kids who are still studying, and with God's help, I was able to put them into good schools and they, they graduated with uh, honors and they are now working in multinational companies. So uh, it was then that I joined the Lord's Flock Ministry through the invitation of my cousin and I became an active member of the intercessory group. So looking back, I realized that everything that happened to me uh, was really God's way. Uh, he has a purpose in giving me those troubles because I became very um, strong in my faith. And uh, right now, I could say that uh, whatever trouble uh, come come my way, whatever troubles come my way, uh, I'll be able to handle it because of the Lord's grace and guidance. So uh, quoting from my one of my favorite Bible verse, Psalm 37, uh, verse 3 and 4, uh, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desire. So I, I'm inviting everyone who are in the same situation as mine, especially the single parents, not to lose hope, but rather be strong and uh, have faith in the Lord. Uh, if you could join our ministry better, because we have our um, monthly SES, and uh, it will be a great help for you, especially during these troubled times. Thank you very much.